Welcome to Stone Cold Classics and today we have something that many of you probably haven't seen before. This is a 1989 Yugo Cabriolet. I keep calling it a convertible, but it says Cabrio on the side, so it's a Cabriolet. Um, this car is right-hand drive, so there are plenty of these. Well, 1,500 or so were built in left-hand drive configuration for the American market. Well, this car was built in right-hand drive for the uh, 1989, I think. I don't know an awful lot about this car, so if you know better than me, please comment. But this was made for the 1989, I think, um, British Motor Show. Um, and uh, as far as we know, is the only one built in right-hand drive. Now, there may be others, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But anecdotally, I've been told that this is the only one in existence. Um, so this car um, was uh, purchased by uh, from by us by from the um, uh, probably the second owner um, who's had it for about 10 11 years he got it from the back of the Minardi Formula One factory where it was stored now why it was there I'm not quite sure we think that um, is it Martin Stoddard who was the uh, the the owner of Minardi he was also involved in Hugo we think again please correct me um, and therefore it was at the back of their storage facility um, unregistered and it is still unregistered hence the Hugo number plates on the front and the back um, we are in the process of trying to get it registered um, uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem um, because it doesn't have a certificate of conformity but it was done by another means I've spoken to someone from uh, Yugo UK who um, went through the process of getting it conformed so um, hopefully we can get that sorted and get it on the number plates and get an MOT um, but as it stands it's a 1400 mile car how an unregistered card's done 1400 miles I don't know but it has done 1400 miles um, and uh, is in fabulous condition it's not perfect uh, it's not a well-built car um, the roof's actually apparently been engineered by Volkswagen. Actually works quite well, but uh, the rest of the car is um, it's, it's fine, but it's, it's not the best built thing in the world, as you can imagine, really. So let's have a closer look at the car. So we've got this nice cabrio graphic on the side, diamond cut alloy wheels. Um, we put brand new tires on it because they look like they were ancient. Um, well, also um, for because for um, reasons of uh, uh, safety we have done the cam belt um, we have done uh, brake fluid we've done new coolant we have done um, uh, what else have we done um, obviously uh, oil filtering out oil and um, yes and it, it, it uh, new fuel and it ran beautifully it runs beautifully I've had it up and down the road on private land and goes like a dream goes through the gearbox nicely starts first time every time um, and it's actually an awful lot of fun to drive so let's have a closer look at it um, there's a few things that are like we've got a little cover clip missing from there it's a shame um, a little bit missing there so there are you know there are details on the car that aren't quite perfect but it's uh, probably as nice as you'll ever find a Yugo of any description, actually. So let's get in there. 1,410 miles. Um, have a look at the seats. These are all really nice sort of velour. All in great condition still. No mats. Carpets are in good condition. Five-speed gearbox. No radio of any description. Just a blank in plate. And uh, the speaker covers are literally that. Behind them is just wood. It's almost like a mock-up and you can see that on the roof side it says driver on the wrong side so they obviously have bothered with simple little details like this because this car was built primarily for a left-hand drive market uh, ashtrays in the back decent bit of room the seats are all the way back at the moment so there's some decent room these seats do fold back there's a little clip there fold back so it's actually quite practical the um the boot itself is really weird. Um, let me open it up. It's on a little cantilever system 
So you open it up and it sort of does a let me see if I can get it on video. Oh does a there we go, it does a sort of cantilever thing like that and comes up and goes back down. It needs a good slam back down because otherwise it's, it doesn't seal. Um, look at the rear brake light centre. Just a piece of plastic. <laughs> just a piece of plastic. Um, uh, the fog light at the moment is just in place because one was missing. We've managed to source one. That needs um, putting in properly. It's literally just hanging in there at the moment. There is no aerial because there is no stereo. But look at the fitment of this stuff. Look, it's um, it's very primitive. Uh, look at that there. Look, diff the gap there. But what a talking piece! What an interesting little car. I am absolutely fascinated by this car. I just it really interests me that these things just exist. And uh, you know, it's a bit of part of history. This car because um, because obviously Yugoslavia was uh, wrapped up in all sorts of political issues in the late eighties and early nineties and. Uh, so certainly Yugo UK were um, a victim of that around this time. So it's probably, again, this is anecdotal, but probably the reason this car um, didn't go any further into mainstream UK production was probably because of those issues. And they were probably getting to the point where they thought, well, let's just sell what we've got rather than introducing new models. But then saying that, I imagine the Sana, the Yugo Sana came out around 90. So... Yeah, you know, there was obviously um, all sorts of stuff going on. And if you know, if you know the story, then please get in touch or comment because I'm fascinated by it all. Um, let's see if it will start that. I think it will start about the choke. So let's start her up because it was running earlier. There you go, look at that. Tiny bit of choke. There we go. This has always started first time every time. At the moment, fuel gauge doesn't work. I don't think there's an awful lot of fuel in there, but certainly not that empty. And we're going to have a play with that, see if we can work it out. Um, it's super basic in here. It's just got these toggles here, which are your lights, heated rear screen, fan, hazards. And then you've got your up and down on your roof. Two tiny little air vents, fog lights, fog light for the rear, and your ventilation, the cigarette lighter, and that is it. So windy up windows and interestingly the rear windows come up with the roof and I'm going to show you this because there's a little issue there it's going to be quite difficult for me to do this with one hand but let me give it a go um, I'm not sure if I need the uh, brake on but let's just go up oh there's my finger get rid of that oh, she goes this is super super slow Up it comes. Now, this is the hard bit because that glass, bit of glass there needs to be, it just needs to be helped into place. So uh, push it out a little bit there. Okay, lovely. And then you do the traditional uh, roof mechanism as on most convertibles, push that down, push it down a bit further than that, goes in there, there. let's make sure that's in, yeah, it's not easy to do with one hand, uh, maybe that's not in properly, no that's definitely in properly, there we go, Locks in, there we go, and lifts up. So I turn the engine off because you're running lovely. I'm gonna pop the bonnet down there, and let's have a look with the roof up. And there she is. Very neat little bit of roof design, I think. And the roof's in superb condition. So no issues, any of the, I mean, you wouldn't want it to be any issues with this because you're never going to find another one. Met glass rear window, can you believe that? Glass rear window, fantastic. 
you would have you would have put money on that being plastic yeah i do need to give that there's a gap there and it shouldn't be there so when the roof goes up with another hand you need just needs glass needs pushing out a little bit um yeah so let's have a look at the car from a distance just looks great for the roof up very very neat design a lot of people who've seen this who didn't know what it was just assumed it was a mark one golf it's got that sort of those sort of lines to it it's a bit smaller than the golf more polo sized let's go around the front the badge on the front there is in excellent condition the paint on this car is beautiful absolutely beautiful a couple of little tiny nicks here and there let's see if i can find one yeah there's a, there's a little tiny nick there but it's very very minuscule this has even got Yugo plastic headlamp covers on both sides. But you can't find any of those anywhere anymore. A uh, little set of fog lights at the front there. And under the bonnet. Pop her up. There we go. Have a look under there. Look at that. The uh, original alloy wheel that was under there was in terrible state, so I've had that redone. New tyre on it as well, because obviously that was original. New battery. Uh, yeah, brand new battery. Uh, there is a, a clamp to go on it. It's in a box somewhere. I need to find it. Um, yeah, have a look around there. There was quite a lot of quite a lot of dirt on the car when we got it, but um, it's, uh, it's come up really, really nice under here. Beautiful condition, I mean. Just, and there's no rust. There's no rust anywhere, which is miraculous, really. But, um, yeah, I had a look at the oil filter. It looks in good condition. Um, like I say, cam belt's been done. Um, brake fluid and uh, coolant and oil and air filter. So, not, not air filter, sorry, because the air filter was good. But we've done the oil filter, obviously. Um, a lot of this is very... Um, so, we took the oil fil old oil filter off, took the... Um, the, the uh, uh, part number from that and it's a fiat part it's a fiat uno part so um loads of these bits are the same as a fiat uno um and uh, or shared with those cars so it's uh, not difficult to get bits um we've got the we got the cam belt off the internet again using the there was a luckily there was a an old cam belt box in the boot um it does come with quite a few parts this car a little box full of parts um but it did have the original owner did change the um uh, the previous owner did change the cam belt and um, left a box in the boot thankfully so we copied the uh, part number and found a brand new one the cam belt that came off it um, was old it had been there a little while but um, uh, you know it, it, it hadn't been used for a long time so so off it came um, what else can I tell you about this car so got a little scoop there which actually does is open and sucks in air um, there is a little crack in in the this plastic piece here which is I tell you, which is really odd about this car when um my windscreen guy came around the other day and was like if the windscreen goes how do you get it out because this whole piece here just surrounds the glass and i can't and it looks like it's bonded in so if you try to take that off to replace the screen i imagine you break it i don't think they thought that through <laughs> um these are cool We've got little yugo signs on the back there um yeah, so, as you know, there's a couple of uh, blemishes. There's a, blem a couple of blemishes on the wheels, but they're in, in really, really good condition for, for what they are. Look at that little, really old-fashioned fuel cap. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what a fascinating piece. At the moment, so no MOT, no V5, um, no UK registration. We're going to try and figure that out. Uh, but if it's something you want in your collection, just to go into storage and be kept as a, as a showpiece, then it's ready. Um, if you do want to buy the car as is, we can help with registration. We are trying to go through that process right now, figuring it out. Shouldn't be too difficult, should be possible, uh, will be possible, I'm certain of that. So we can get this car on the road. Um, MOT wise, it will fly through, everything's fine, everything works. Um, so yeah, here she is. Um, I'm gonna retail this at 9995, because um, it is unique. Uh, I can imagine, a standard hatchback version in perfect condition in today's market might be five six grand perhaps um, if you could find one which you probably can't because they did just deteriorate very rapidly but this one i know one sold in america for about twelve thirteen thousand dollars about five six years ago uh, in this color um, so unique opportunity right hand drive be the only person 
in the country to have. It's fabulously beautiful, in my eye anyway, <laughs> a little Yugo convertible. So if you like this car, please go to stonecoldclassics.com. There'll be a full picture set and description. And if you like cars like this, then please like and subscribe because there's loads of weird and wonderful stuff in my archive. Uh, lots of normal stuff as well, but lots and lots of weird and wonderful things just like this beautiful Yugo. Thanks for watching.